Ready, Freddy? Ready. Hey guys, welcome to Fly RC Joe's workshop. Can you want to prop that door? So, real quick, if anybody's on, um, is anybody on? No, not yet. Okay. So, we're going to go over a quick review, and you guys can rewatch this um, at the beginning, of wing tube sockets, how we did it. First, quality wax. You're going to wax your tube, you're going to put down one and a quarter wraps of wax paper. Um, so you're going to wax your tube, you're going to polish it back off once it dries, you're going to put what they call PVA, um, and I like to use a cup with, a, with just a paper towel to actually wipe this on there and then it's all done in PVA. Now, um, then you're going to use the mylar, you're going to cut out your cloth, you're going to do two wraps of 1.4 ounce cloth, two wraps of 3.6 ounce cloth, and that's going to give you a really nice, not too strong a tube, not too weak a tube. It's really something I've worked on and got to where I love that formula. Um, it also gives you a nice rough finish so when you're bonding it into your foam, it gives something to really stick. Um, so then you're going to use the sheet of mylar that we talked about, or glass, or you know thick plastic. You're going to clamp it down to your bench so that when you're rolling, you can roll and pull so that it gets rid of the air bubbles. So wax, PVA, one and a quarter wraps of wax paper, only taped at each end. You're going to notice that this one is the one that we were talking about how to make the sleeves that go through the uh, fuselage. Um, and I only do this for the fuselage, and it's mainly just for bling, guys. I just kind of like it. So we did three wraps of 1.4 ounce cloth, or two wraps. Then I popped it loose, and I did not pull it off the tube. I, all I did is cracked it loose. Then I used... A one and a half inch woven carbon fiber sleeve. Now you got to be careful with this stuff. Always making sure to wear gloves when you're applying it and things like that because it is toxic. Then we just sleeved it up on to the tube. I wetted the tube down with some epoxy. I wetted the tube down with some epoxy, then I slid over the dry wrap. Then I just took a pair of gloves and I pulled on it, stroked on it. Hi um, Tanner. Hey Tanner. So I just got done stroking my tube, really enjoyed it tonight. Now it's all nice and wet and sticky. Um, I can't wait to be off the topic of my tubes. <laughs> so then I pulled. I wetted down the deal, slid the dry cloth, the dry piece over it, and then I pulled on it to really saturate down in there. Then I brush a little bit of epoxy back on it, and I rub it until I take all the excess to the ends here, and there's not a lot there. And then it's really a nice and dry, true carbon fiber looking tube that will be in the end. Here's one that's all cut off. A nice stiff 
beautiful looking true fiberglass sleeve with a really nice smooth inner finish so it's not going to scratch up your tube over time. I really like this. So, so that's the beginning or the end of wing tubes. So next, now tomorrow, I'm going to let this dry, take the tape off, slide the thing off, cut it to length, and I'm done. Um, So wing tubes, just to reiterate one thing, it's way more difficult than it looks. This process has been super easy on the ones that we did the video on. We did go back through and I made some of the other halves um, for this staff tube that I'm working on. Um, they normally don't pop off that easy. Don't freak out when they don't pop off easy. Actually, I like it when they don't pop off easy because they're going to be a really nice fit. But these last ones popped off beautifully. It was just about the tube. Like we talked about, you can get a tube that's ballooned up on the ends or in the middle. You're really going to feel it with these sockets more than anything. So don't give up on your first try. Keep trying, keep trying. It'll come. Um, it's just really awesome how nice they fit and how they wear. Um, I just absolutely love them. So, wax, PVA, Mylar. So, to go on to what we're going to talk about tonight, getting really close on these foam wings. Um, let me grab one that we're working on. This is Lonnie's wing that we were working on tonight. For I need to make a quick correction. Lonnie's airplane is a pilot 42% edge that we are. I came across just a fuselage. He bought himself a cowling, um, and we're going to cut out foam wings, and we're going to uh, build stabs and a rudder. We're going to leave the turtle deck alone. So. We're not going to do too much crazy stuff except for my thin wing design. Um, this one we actually went a little thicker than we even wanted to because of it had a two inch wing tube in it. Um, we just cut our own foam wings. One of the biggest keys that I truly have found is when I put in my sleeves, I cut a nice large box to get down in there to cut my tube. One of the biggest keys is this piece right here. It's two inches further in than the end of your wing tube. This is the end of your wing tube. This right here displaces the pressure point. So if you look at an old style airplane that doesn't have this, what would happen is the foam wing would start to rock a little bit because this is getting spongy out here. So came up with a plate design that I've been doing for years and I'm telling you, it's the way to do it. Um, this one right here is an inch and three quarter beyond the end of this box, and it is one inch forward. So all this is doing is dispersing this. I build them super, super long. There's no pur purpose in that. It was not any stronger. We did break tests, but you do want to get this nice and big, because then when we lay his spar in here, which we will talk about, it just disperses that load and that foam wing cannot get old and spongy over time. Um, you'll look at some of the older kits and they weren't even putting this chunk of wood back in, I mean foam back in, and those were getting super spongy really quick. Lots of guys, they were putting glue or a piece of wood all the way down to the wing tube to stop it from rocking up and down. That all works. The super simple, quick, easy way is that. Now, I do put my wing tubes in with Gorilla Glue. You'll notice that we have not even sanded these down. And we put these in the shucks on a great big long bench, and we put the tubes in, put the tube in, and then slid the other wing all the way until it was there. So that these are perfectly parallel. Um, if you wanted the height, the heat roll in it, um, 
it's all going to be perfect. So big, eight foot long by four foot bench. And we actually put a piece of uh, saran wrap down inside the bottom shuck so that it doesn't stick to your foam shuck. And then we set it in here and we put a great big piece of saran wrap on here with just four little corners of tape on there. We put that in there, we put a chunk of wood on there, and a bunch of salt on there. Um, if this doesn't make sense, I will go back and do a segment on this on just elevators, something smaller, something a little quicker. Um, but then we married the other one to it, and that way it was super, super strong. Now, the next step that we do is I like to add all my leading and trailing edges and my aileron stock. Now, one of the biggest keys is this balsa is going to go a little crooked. So what we do, these are long enough, we had to do a 45 joint out here on the ends. What we do is we draw a pen line along the edge of the balsa so that we have a reference mark so that it doesn't have large waves in it when you apply it. Then another key, when you're taping this on, I'm just going to sit here with some green tape, be careful because if you pull super hard on this side, you're going to crook that balsa. So the key is just to lightly pull down on both sides, not pulling too much because three quarter pound foam, you can actually crush it and you'll get a big wave in it. So you lightly pull down, tack it. Now I tack one, two, three, four. Then I come back up. Lonnie actually brought up a great point tonight. He thought I was going to lay this on the bench, have all this tape laid out here, and then pull up. The problem is with that is you can pull more on one side. So I like to just drape it over so that I can see that this is nice and flat. You're going to tack in four points. Then you're going to come back up and you're going to scosh your foam in and out to follow that parallel line. Then you're going to come back and quickly tape the rest. Now, the best stick that I found, and you're going to notice that it doesn't even stick that great. It will pop because we don't have a lot of pull pressure on it. That's why it likes to pop. I have truly found that the blue painter's tape, the 3M blue painter's tape to foam works the best. Now, for everything else, I really like this green tape that Terry turned me on to. It's a little bit cheaper than the blue tape, but I didn't have as great a success when it came to attaching to the foam. Now, definitely try your own kinds of tapes. Experimentation is everything. You know, and if you if you go in and just buy blue tape, they're not all the same. 3M tape's a little bit better. Duct tape's better. There's a thousand different blue tapes also. Same with the green tape. There's a ton of variations in green tape. So, Definitely try what works best for you, but you do not want it to stick too much like the brown tape because as I come back and I want to pull this off, I don't want to yank up a great big chunk of foam. So don't use duct tape, uh, for example. Um, that would really cause a mess. Now, so tomorrow, uh, no, next Tuesday on Lonnie's, we're going to come back through and we're going to shave these off. We're going to put a great big piece of tape on here. We're going to shave these back off with a razor. We're going to clean these off. We're going to make in a block of hardwood. It's actually, I build one made out of quarter inch balsa. I make a lot of my own stuff. Quarter inch balsa, plywood, balsa, plywood. Okay. Um, the reason I do that instead of just one hard piece is I use a lag anchor to do my bolts. It's nice because it's actually your anti-rotation pin and your alignment pin. It's just super, super nice to come up with that. Um, and when I've done this and you put the lag bolt in there, it doesn't want to split it apart. If it was just balsa, it's going to want to split it apart. If it's just a solid piece of oak, it's going to be heavy. Um, so I've come up with mixing my plywoods and balsa wood and I stick them, I vacuum bag this together at 30 pounds of pressure and I epoxy this together and it just makes a super, super nice block for everything to attach to and it won't break. So that's his next step. Now, we did do end caps, trailing edges, and leading edges. 
and then we will do this end cap tomorrow. Now, another big one is make sure you draw lines on your outer piece also. This foam at this stage is so flexible, you can actually get this out of whack everywhere. Um, that's the reason a lot of guys don't do the prelay, but the prelay, you just got to remember instead of a 1 16th bond to hold this trailing edge on, I have a quarter of an inch on the front here. It's really nice when I sand down my leading edges, and I'll show you a wing that's sheeted and it's about ready to start getting sanded. Um, it's just going to make it a really nice finish. It's never going to pop loose over time, and I've actually kind of felt that the wings are stronger that way also. So, is it just Tanner stuff? There's someone else. I don't know who the. <clears throat> so, next, we would go through, and we're going to end cap it. Now, you're going to notice that fiberglass socket sticking out there. I'm going to put this on. I have found I like white glue on all of this. Uh, all the foam to balsa. I really like the Elmer's. Elmer's glue all. Okay. Now, anything that touches on all these little corners that hit the wood. I use tight bond two or tight bond three, wood to wood. Um, I just put a little drip there on the wood and then I wipe, we put the white glue onto the wood. I just don't touch the very ends and I just wipe it really nice and thin and then I attach it, tape it. Um, yeah, if you'll do the wood to wood, it's a little bit stronger. They don't like to break off at all. The other big key with your tape, when you're putting on these end caps, um, make sure you're not pulling too much to where you can actually, even this lightweight uh, aircraft ply, I can crown that by pulling down. Now, I do not sand these perfectly to fit. You'll notice on Lonnie's that they're a little bit bigger. Even on these, I'm a quarter of an inch. I have a pen line drawn all the way around it. I pull it down and tack it with the tape. But don't pull too much and crown your wood, especially on all of your 8 inch balsa stuff. You can really crown them, so go slow. Um, another big thing that a lot of guys freak out about, I don't know if you can see that little wave right through there, don't worry. Um, when you put it in your shuck, because you're going to be vacuum bagging on a nice hard bench, it's going to pull it nice and straight. It really will. Now, we'll go into that when I actually vacuum bag this. I'll show another technique that I like. I have these little pieces of aluminum bar that come all the way along that I use as a pinch clamp. And I do that on my trailing edges so that they're perfectly straight. Um, so, next what I did is I drew out all my lines and I cut everything with the hot wire and I just cut it all off and I after I did my trailing and leading edges I come back through and I cut out all the foam and I attach in all of this then I put the tape down and I planed it then I ran a small bead of CA on the top and bottom and nothing in the middle because when I'm all said and done I'm going to score down through this and I'm just going to slap it and you're going to hear it snap loose um, and then you can go in and do your bevels and they're going to be just absolutely beautiful. Um, so, now once that's said and done, I had my tape still sitting on here and I came through and I scuffed it all nice and smooth. I pulled the tape off and I gave it one last scuff over. Before I put my sheeting on here, I'm going to blow through it. Um, just to get all the dust off. The next project to start figuring out servo boxes. So I build all my balsa, I mean my boxes out of eighth inch balsa and then it's a aircraft light ply with a piece of half inch stacked up wood here. Let me show you a piece.
Now this is crazy. So what I do is I build these blocks just like this and then I go chop it into the segments of the particular servo size that I want to fit and how deep it needs to be. Um, then what I do is I have a piece of balsa laying here and I just glue that down. And then I take the next one and I glue it down and I glue it down. And then what you do is you leave just a nice little gap in between your servo boxes. Something like this is what it's going to look like. Then you take your scrap from over here, you put a nice bead of glue along all those, you take your scrap and you put it on there. What you come out with is super quick, nice balsa blockus, I mean boxes. Now, I always make my tops taller than what they actually need to be. So, if I set this particular servo in here, you're going to notice that it's completely embedded. Now, I have a line on here that is going to be where it needs to be on the height of the foam. Now, that is 1 16th down from the top of the rubber. Um, then the next big process is figuring out where all the servo boxes go. Now, we just use a Dremel. Hey guys, don't forget to share our videos, like our page, share it with your friends. And I know I'm kind of speeding through this stuff, guys, um, but I really want to show you guys. And I'm just going to continue to do little segments and hopefully we can show little pieces every time. On this foam wing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just upload some pictures as I go further along to show you the process. Um, I absolutely love these rat tails. Uh, they're actually a Dremel bit for cleaning out grout. They're sharp, multiple different directions. Um, they're really awesome. Then we just use a Dremel flush bit. And we're just going to go in there and we're going to draw in pen on the foam. We're going to stuff that down in there and we're going to router it out using the vacuum at the same time so it doesn't just make a mess. Um, then you're going to set that a little deeper and the same thing goes for servo boxes. Now when they're super deep is when it really gets to be a challenge but you can set that bit clear out there to the tip because you're only, you're only routering foam. Um, you can get those nice and deep. Are you going to be doing this over the weekend? Yes. So we'll try and show it when you do it? Yes. Because I know these guys probably know more than me, but I'm lost. Hey, if you guys are lost, please send in questions, and I want to hit those key points. Um, because the way I do it is quite different from everybody else. Um, I don't know why I do it this way. So, I'll sit there and get this until that box is all the way down in there. And you're going to have to stagger down in because you're going to start off taking out a big chunk and then you have, to, you have to go deeper. This smooth piece right here is going to actually track right along the box and it's going to be a little easier and a little faster. Um, so, now, wire channels. Um, mm -hmm. What I do is I actually know a designated, on this particular wing, I know a designated spot that I need to come out at. Well, I want my servo boxes here. I don't want my wire going up along here because I'm going to be coring some wings out. I'm actually going to try something different on this one and I'll show you guys what I'm doing. But this next deal is a little bit of an experiment. I'm actually going to oval, I'm going to make some large ovals. Um, I don't have the templates. We'll show them when you do it. So 
I'm going to do some large ovals that are going to simulate wing ribs, and I'm hoping that it's a little lighter, but I'm not going to take the sheeting out on the main wing. On the ailerons, I've always taken out the sheeting. That came from Bob Sawyer Sensei um, of taking out the sheeting. His The way that it was described is you can take out the foam, you can Swiss cheese this whole foam, but if you don't get rid of the balsa, you're not getting rid of the weight. There's very, very little weight applied in in the balsa, and there's very little weight applied into the foam. When we're trying to get rid of a lot of weight, you know, the glue, everything adds up. So the ailerons will be cored out, but my main wing I'm not going to on this particular one. So my problem has always been I need to come from here, and I want to bring my wire channel down, and then I want to go a half an inch to three quarters of an inch up further than the back leading edge of the foam. So what I do is I use the rat tail to draw my primary line. Then I'm going to use this little bit right here. You're going to stick one hole down in there, and then because it's on the smooth side, you're going to just have a nice little track to drive up in there. Now I used to come up to each servo. You don't need to do that. If you come down in there, and you have not installed these boxes, you can actually take the router and just dig down in there until you hit that wire channel. Now, that wire channel is not big enough for three wires. So what I do is I come in one time, and I'm a quarter inch down from the top of the foam. Then I reset it, and I drop it down further, and I do that a consecutive of two to three times. So if you take it's a box this big by quarter inch, you're going to get three wires through it um, quite easily. Now, you have this great big channel cut in there, and if we were using Gorilla Glue like the old method, the Gorilla Glue is going to find that channel and it's going to fill your wire line. I have a bunch of quarter inch by eighth inch balsa. Eighth inch balsa fits in these channels perfectly. I will put a piece of balsa capping that channel so I don't get glue down in there and cause myself a grief because I have a curved channel in there. If you fill that with glue, you're going to have a problem. Um, there's ways to fix it. You can desheet that section. You can reroute or everything. Glue a new sheet back on just like a patch repair on, a, on an R wing and glue it back down and you'd be okay. But make sure you cap that off. Um, hey, Mark. Mark Call? Thurman. Thurman? Hey, Mark Thurman. So, the next thing is G10 horns. A uh, good friend of mine makes these for me. Um, he doesn't sell them, I'm sorry. Um, JTEC makes them. The number one thing, I like the JTEC horns. The only complaint I have, and you guys will see why as we go along on these foam wings, is you'll notice I don't have any drill holes in them. The reason is, is because I want to set all these perfectly, and once everything is beveled, I will take my measuring stick, stick it down in there perfectly on the bevel, measure exactly up, mark on the horn exactly one and a half or one and three quarter or two inch depending upon the wing. I pull it back out. I take these two that are for this pocket right here and I match drill those. Then I come out here and I get this perfectly one and three quarter and that one perfectly one and three quarter. That's the reason it is absolutely perfect geometry. Well, as close as you can get. There's never perfect. Um, but that is the reason why I have these made by my buddy, um, does a beautiful job. Just hold on right there. He's made a bunch of different series for me. Now you're going to notice that I have really big bottom pieces. Now, this is the reason why. Now. I'm going to embed this into the foam, and the reason that this is a quarter inch piece of balsa up here, an eighth inch piece of light ply, a five eighths piece of balsa, and a piece of light ply down below. I do not have these drilled 
for where these are going to go. I embed this, I bevel that off perfectly, then I sheet the wing. Now I have my servo box put in there and I can actually pull a parallel line back, measure over the quarter of an inch so that I have a small angle. Hey Lonnie. Hey Lonnie. Um, nice seeing you just a minute ago. So we, we want a little bit of an angle on our servos. Then what I can do is actually align these perfectly. Then I take a 1 16th drill bit, I leave it in the foam shuck, and I go out and I make a series of 1 16th holes. Then you can set that down in there, and then you're going to take your Dremel uh, flush cut saw, and you're going to finish down into those, or a razor saw, and you're just going to clean those out to where those fit nice and smooth down in there. And then when you glue those in there, you're going to see that as this thing tries to apply pressure out, it can't because I got plywood and I got plywood down here. So that is the reason these are just super, super strong. That's why I like these really long. Um, it's just it's a much, much stronger system um, than just balsa. But then again, the balsa, as long as you use a, a long open time epoxy, is going to work really well if you add these nifty little tops here. Oops, wrong bag. If you use these nifty little tops that most of the ARF manufacturers and things like that do, and then you just had a soft piece of balsa, and this is glued onto the surface top, you're going to notice that that's really also going to help apply the distribution of load. Um, so the tops work really well. I don't like the tops. I like mine super, super clean. So I do a stacked piece of wood. Now, because this has been vacuum bagged all together, 30 pounds, 30, 30 bar, um, with a 105 nice long open time epoxy, you'll actually see the epoxy actually protrudes up through the quarter inch piece of wood. Um, it really does pull it right to the top. Super, super strong. Really easy way to go. Um, like I said, we're going to try to do just pictures, not a live feed on this whole mix piece. Now, I had a really great question, and I'll show it here on this other one. I might sneak in a live one here or there over the weekend. Okay. I would happy to be a do a live one. Um, yeah. He just knows I have three different funerals to attend this weekend. So, yeah. bear with us. So, this is a 54% slick one. Now, you're going to notice that this is all... I like to pre-glue all my, my sheeting together. So hey, thanks, Mark. That is what all of this glue here is, is that is just sheeting glue, and it's a tight bond two or a tight bond three, and I tape all my sheets together. Now, you're gonna notice I do everything with a 45 line, and the reason is because it's a stronger wing. Now, if you're sheeting a foam wing and you have two parallel sheets that are aligned to each other, that is a stress break place. It'll want to crack loose in the middle. So always stagger the sheets top and bottom and always make sure that these are staggered different from each other. That is your weak point of your wing is where those joints come together. So make sure that you staggered those. Now, a lot of guys have asked, how do you find your servo boxes so perfectly when they're sheeted over. Do you have measurements? Absolutely not. I take a very, very high powered light bulb and I stick it underneath the sheeting and if it was dark and we could actually see this, we've done some experiments with the camera, couldn't really see it all that well. Is your light charged? No. So you can stick it underneath there and I call it egging. Uh, 
grew up on a farm and we'd look at the eggs to see if they had a baby in them and stuff like that. It's the same premises. You're going to stick the light underneath there and it's going to shine right through that sheeting and that foam so that you can see where that box is. Then you can draw a pen line around it. You can take a super sharp razor blade and you can just cut down in there and then you have this nice perfectly aligned deal. Now you can use the egging technique to, to find your, your aileron in there. Now the one big key is how do you find perfect center to your aileron? These marks right here, I'm going to finish this, I'm going to sand it smooth, making sure not to take off these marks. I do have these measurements written down, so in case they get sanded off, you can find them again. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take a straight aluminum bar, and you're going to be able to come to your reference points. Now this one's a straight leading edge, not a boxed one, but if you're doing a boxed one, there's a mark out here. Then you can draw your dill, and you can cut. You'll be able to do the egging technique to see where this line is here then you're going to have a nice perfect straight line down there. You're just going to take a razor blade and you're just going to start cutting down in, cutting down in. Nice and liberal. I only do a quarter of an inch to a half an inch deep all the way down and slap it and it'll just crack right off. Um, now, before I do that, I make sure and sand all my leading and trailing edges. I purposely left this one so you guys can see the foam bagging, how it's um, it pulls it around. But now I'm just going to lightly shave this down with a sanding bar and get that all done. Um, then I'll draw the line, I'll crack it loose, then I'll come up with the bevel. And i I got to show you guys a really cool trick on the beveling when I get there. Um, we'll kind of go in depth on the beveling because we all know how to figure out that angle. I come up with a really stupid cheating way. I'll quickly grab my book. Hey, Jimmer, is that you? Jimmer. Alaska. Oh, hey, Jimmer. So, this is my stupid technique for figuring out Bevels. And it works so perfectly. You can have all these big angles, you know, thin to thick and the tips and everything else. And when I sweep my ailerons up, they match perfectly. Um, what I do is I come up with the thickness of this material right up here in this in this block. And then I mark it out with three quarters of an inch or half inch or whatever your stock was in there. Then I made this little jig here that has these reference lines to how thick that was. Now this is to the the edge, this is three quarter inch block and what you're going to do is you're going to take that and you're going to perfectly zero it just touching this little edge. You're going to sweep up here until it touches hey, and then Jerry. you measure over and what you can do is then you can actually have a number of, I want to hit 50 degrees, I want to hit 50, 55, 45. And I'll just line this up on there, making sure that this is a perfect line. Then all you have to do is take a measurement from the beginning of your edge stock back, and always making sure if it was three quarter inch block, you want to measure the backside. Double check your number twice. Um, then you know exactly how much to cut off here and then when you come out to the other smaller tip you put it on the same gauge and it will perfectly match so then you just take a nice straight bar and you're going to pen line it on there take a super sharp chisel and chisel that off <clears throat> just wanted to show you guys this what he's showing you is you don't need fancy equipment <laughs> although it would be nice very much so but Anybody can pull off this stuff with a lot of practice and patience that I don't have. You know, and that's that's the crazy part is 
I love the way Terry does it. Absolutely loves it how he can do it in CAD. But you know, guys, you don't have to have the million dollar tools and things like that. You can build. You can take a scroll saw, a vacuum bag, a cheap wing cut. I mean, a hot wire, and you can build a full on airplane. You really can if you just set your mind to it. Um, and coming up with these stupid little jigs, I know that there's a math equation to it. I, I researched the math equation, I did the math equation, and it never came out perfect. And I really struggled to get them to be perfect. I I don't even know why, just, uh, it looks pretty. And he does so. have a CNC machine permanently placed on his Santa Christmas wish list. Yes. Just, just so you know, it doesn't mean he doesn't dream about them. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, before I crack this loose, I do want to take... sander, a large bar, and you want to come through all of these sheets, and you want to just lightly skip them off. You want to get rid of all this glue, but don't sand too much. Remember, you're working with 1 16th sheeting, so don't sand too much. And also remember, if you have a big bar, this is straight. As you come up to here, this is your crown. This is where you need to start straightening up. So I will sand these off with uh, with an orbital and then I'm going to come back through with a long bar give it a last skiff work in my leading and trailing edges um, this was taught to me by Jeff Blaylock he used to fly a lot of um, competition stuff he used to really work his cards to have thick to thin and he said that that really helped with flutter. I absolutely agree a thousandfold because I've never had a problem with flutter since I started doing this. Um, it really makes them nice and slippery. Now, one of the big keys on my wing design is I do the same on the leading edge. Mine are very, very blunt in the, against the fuselage, very, very sharp out here at the tip. And the reason is I'm inducing drag at the center of the fuselage, like an arrow, and I'm breaking drag out here. You know, I don't want drag as much on the tip so that the airplane wants to track straight. That's how I can take a very, very short coupled airplane and make it tr track like a very long airplane. But the short airplane can tumble a little bit better. Um, hey, JR. Hey, JR. So, this is a true drawing of a root and a tip on a 42% edge 540. Um, you're going to notice the one thing I want to show you is how blunt my wing is at the root and how sharp it is at the tip. Now, the big key... JR says he likes tumbles. Yes, very much so. <laughs> so, one of the crazy things, I don't know if this is a trade secret, but hey, what the heck. Um, we're going to talk about it. Um, <clears throat> what I have done on an Edge 540 wing is I have kept a straight leading edge. Now, your pressure point is right about here. Your CG point is about right here. You can actually see the CG number. Now, most of your Edge 540s built by Extreme Flight or anybody, their pressure point seems to be the same as the CG point all the way out. The problem with that wing on an edge, in my theory, guys, I have no engineering background. Let's make that straight. But my theory is on an upline, it wants to wander. Well, an edge, an extra wing, because it's tapered back, is better at dragging a nice straight up line. Now, so what I did is I brought my pressure point further back. Now, all I did is I pulled my crown point further back, okay, than most edges. And so what it does, it takes my pressure point on a diagonal. So it actually is a straight leading edge wing 
that flies very, very similar to an extra. And how I cheated it was pulling my pressure point back. If anybody steals it, I don't care at all. Let's just get that straight. Just please make sure to give me credit for it because uh, this has been a, an airfoil design on edges. I bet you I tried it. Oh, I've refined this wing over five, six airplanes. Um, I've really found this to start working. We finished up the black and silver one that is nicknamed uh, Gemma. Gemma. Sorry. <laughs> my wife names all my airplanes because hey, I spent too much time with them. So, His girlfriends have to have names. That's right. So, bringing that pressure point back made it fly so close to an extra. It's amazing. Um, I've actually had some really well known names think that I didn't have a straight leading edge. I do. But the big key right here, and I'm, this is the first time I'm letting it out into the world, um, is I pulled this pressure point further back on the tip. And you can actually see that by this drawing. Um, you'll, that pressure point has been pulled quite a bit further back than everybody else. Now, it works. And again, going from very, very blunt to very, very sharp at the tip is also inducing drag so that it's not wanting to wander on the upline. The thick to thin on the trailing edges is really helping with flutter and also drag. Um, we're building arrows, guys. Let's feather them right. Um, that's that's the way I've always thought of this. So, thanks for sharing the videos, guys, and yep. welcome, Steve. Hey, Steve. Rains. Hey, Steve Rains. So, but definitely, if you want to take it, I'll even ship you the design. I mean, I have no problems with it. I've already tested it. Um, Anybody's welcome to this design if they want to build an R4. Um, even if you guys want to build your own, I don't care. I'll, I'm not going to sit down and make you templates, and I don't cut foam wings. I'm very, very busy, I'm sorry to say. But I'm happy to send you drawings. Um, and then you can do whatever you want with the theory. Just make sure. Yeah, so. Just make sure to let them know if you like it or not. That's right. And here's the funny part. Guys, everything we do is experimentation. That's what's fun about the hobby. You gotta try, you gotta try to make your own tubes. You gotta try to cut your own foam wings. You gotta try to do the impossible all the time. Um, so, hang on real quick. Okay. So JR wants to know, he says, so the airfoil remains the same? No. So, I think I know where you're going with this, Jr. <laughs> this could be a this could be a four night segment on wings. Colton, um, wait, but Colton says it's like you're breaking the magician's code. You I know can't I am. Give away the airfoils, man. I, I would agree a hundred percent, but guys, not really because you're doing it. Well, I started this um, this group to share. I really want to see more builders try. I want to see people experiment. I want to see people break an airplane because then they're going to learn. I mean, I have broken, I have broke a lot of airplanes, and I have built wings to just break them to come up with these theories. And you know what? It has been so much fun. It has been a huge part of my life that I feel it's time that when I die. I'm not dying, let's just make that straight, but <laughs> when I die, I want this to carry on. If we can make planes fly better, right on. That That's my sole goal in doing this. This is the only reason we're taking the time to teach this, to show this. They are my trade secrets. They have been my heart and soul. I have worked very, very, very hard on figuring this out and seeing it work and refining it and refining it but it's time to let it to the world and hey like I said anybody wants a drawing of my airfoils you're welcome to them with full dimensions of how much I pulled back and how big they are and everything else right to scale I don't I don't even care you pay for the shipping I'll send you the part um, so, welcome Chris hey Chris 
So my airfoil is not the same, okay? They are definitely thinner, you know, to the tip. They're quite a bit thicker. So this one here at the root was three and a quarter. At the tip, it was one and five eighths. Now, the airfoil is not the same. You're going to notice that this pressure point is right here. You're going to notice that that's the reason there's a box line here. You're going to notice that that pressure point is further back. On edges, they normally crown this front leading edge to make it more blunt. And what they're doing is they're pulling that pressure point forward, forward a little bit more. Which in theory to me is actually making them act like a like the wing that is swept forward instead of swept back. So, we love how edges fly. Can you do that standing on one leg? Sure. I'm not <laughs> doing the crane position for nobody. So, um, pulling that pressure point back seemed to work on an edge. But here's the fun part. There's only one way to find out if it works. You know, the whole time, this was quite fun. Thank you, Terry, for indulging me on this Gemma airplane, the Edge 540 version 1. Um, no, she was, said version 1. No. <laughs> oh, no. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Edge 540 version 1. Now I took a scale drawing of an airplane. Now the version one meant flat stab, okay? The original edge. Now there's a V3 version with the airfoil with the Oracle style cowling and everything else. So I actually took the full scale drawings, started out with the wings, came up with how big I wanted it. Then I just started figuring out all the measurements, how far back it needed to be, how wide it needed to be. Well, this was a very, very short airplane. so. Shorter than anybody. This is actually true scale. Taken off of a scale drawing and blown up to what I wanted. I am truly scale, and I was really stressing out that this airplane wasn't going to fly well. So thank you, Terry. Thank you, thank you for indulging my craziness and encouraging me to keep keep going because. This, plain and simple, is my favorite airplane to fly. It is a foamy on steroids, and it flies amazing. It, it doesn't track crooked. It doesn't fly short at all. So that's what Edge 540 version 1 means. So, JR, I hope I answered your question on the airfoil is not... Welcome, Gary. Uniform. Okay, it does change. Um... It does get thinner, it does get sharper, and it, the pressure point comes further back. Now on an extra, I'm not going to try to pull that pressure point back. I want that pressure point to be the same, but again, even on an extra wing, I do very, very blunt, I do very, very sharp, and I do thin to thick on the trailing edges so that it tracks like an arrow. Um, hopefully that answers that question. If it didn't, please ask uh, another question. <laughs> yes, you did. Thank you. Thank you. So, again, just to kind of reiterate, I've had a lot of people in the past ask me for plans and drawings or full-on plans of my airplanes. There is no plans. Everything is done just like this. I keep it in a book. These are my... You know, all my little sketches for how thick this flat stab was going to be, how we were going to build the block to hold the horn so that it wouldn't want to rip them out because it's only 5 eighths of an inch of thick. And we really wanted to be able to go up and 3D this plane super, super hard. And again, the plywood in the middle, the plywood on the top, it really has worked with the G10 horn. These have never torn out. Um, since we started doing that stacked plywood design. So, um, sorry, these are actually, these drawings are very important to me. If I ever pull them out, 
I make sure to put them right back in the book because there's a lot of time, a lot of energy that's went into each one of those drawings, so I never want to lose one. So, again, cheat your foam wings, use the egg deal. Oh, so, ah, man, I forgot where these blocks are. Did I have my servo horns going this way or did I have them going that way? If you take the big light, stick it underneath there, these will show right up. It's, it's the coolest little way to do it until you get to a really thick wing. When you start getting into the, the big, thick wing, big wing, it's not going to egg up here, but it'll egg back here where you actually need it to work. Now, um, going back to foam wings, the reason I want guys to really, really try is because I was told over and over and over, and I, the next series of wings are even bigger. Okay, this is only a 52% edge. It's a 52% edge 540 slick. Well, I came up with a way to do the foam in two pieces and then run the spar through it, and I will get into the spars before we sheet those wings. Um, I will get into my spar design and actually let you guys know all about that too. So, but just came up with a series of templates, you know, a split section, and, and I've been able to take something that was impossible. Now, the reason that this is impossible, why you need to make this in two sections, is because the, the hot wire bows, when they get to a certain distance, will start to sag, and then you're going to have a sixteenth of an inch or eighth of an inch droop in your wing, which you don't want. So, that's why I cut these in series. The longest I will do in a single cut is 64 inches. So it won't cut this whole chunk in one chunk. That's the reason we do this. So the way I look at it is with this design of doing two pieces of foam, uh, it takes some time to make the templates um, so that you can do this. And it takes some experiments. Um, use some crappier foam when you first do your first cuts just to see if everything perfectly gets smooth. You'll notice that these are glued together with just an Elmer's white glue and then put some tape on it. These are perfectly smooth in between each one. Um, if you don't, when you vacuum bag the whole thing together, you're going to have problems. Um, so experiment, experiment, experiment is the key to life, I think. Um, I, you're very I, theoretical to me. What? You're very theoretical today. Yeah, well. The jokes were at the beginning. No, no more. That's right. No more jokes. No <laughs> more stroking or hey, pulling. Yeah, we're done with the wing tubes, guys. Yeah. The wing tubes were, thank you guys for indulging. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of a fun one. But, um, Until you do them again next time, right? Yep. <laughs> hey, and guys, if there's anything I missed. What type of foam are you using? So... I use a three-quarter pound, it's .75, what they call grade A virgin. So I have a place here in Salt Lake that I buy it from that manufactures it. Um, so mine is called .7, .75, grade A. Now, grade C, when they cut it up into chunks for me, it curved a lot. And the reason they said that C did that is because the moisture content was not as low as it needs to be because it's construction grade. And like the guy even said, he goes, it's kind of the crap grade. They can throw whatever they want. They can sweep the floor up and chuck it in there. With grade A is the beginning of the run. It's all virgin beads. Um, you're going to have less voids. You're going to have better foam. They let that cure longer so that it doesn't get the crowns and the curves. Um, if you guys want me to, I will do a quick segment cutting stabs or something showing the hot wire system, um, how it works, if you guys want to see that. If so, please comment and we'll get it done. Um, because I'm constantly cutting foam. It doesn't matter if it's stabs, rudders, wings. Um, it's pretty cool. We'll just show it. It's pretty cool. It's definitely worth seeing. You know, Lonnie was really amazed when we did it with him, you know, how the gravity feed system works. My feather, I mean, my hot wire system was made by Feathercut, 
I really do recommend his his bows. Um, I've extended my stuff so that it can do a little bit bigger. I've had to go get a little bit bigger power supplies to be able to do it. But you know, with a 50 inch with a 52 inch bow, you can build all the way up to a 60 percent endpoint because you just make it in two sections. Um, Jr. wants to know where you get your foam again. So, do you remember who it's from? It's uh, no. Like a. I said, it's just a guy in Salt Lake. It starts with an A. ACH. ACH Foam. Now, ACH Foam has divisions in Arizona. They have one here in Utah. But you're just looking for a white three-quarter pound foam. Um, there's places all over the country that manufacture it. There's a lot used in construction for doing um, insulation for roofing. Roofing is where it uses it a lot, but theirs is usually a three pound density. Some roofing contractors do use a one pound density. Now, one pound density compared to three quarter pound density, how much weight is there really in the wing? Um, how much weight of just foam is right here? I've done the math to it. It's not much, but three quarter pound is a little lighter, but the one thing you've got to remember is three quarter pound is more flexible, okay? And it's a lot easier to dent. If you push on it, if you push on it wrong, three quarter pound is a little harder to work with. I really do recommend trying to find some one pound density to learn these tricks of pre-laying stuff. Now, that's the reason I do the Bob Sawyer coring. Um, And there's really no math to how much we core out and things like that. That's another question that gets asked a lot is, how do you know how much to core out? Well, it just comes with feel. Um, you want to core out enough to take out weight, but you also don't want to core out too much and make things too, too weak. So it's something that I'll give all my measurements how much I take out on this one uh, as we get there. It just comes with nature, it just comes with time, you know, how much to core out. So, um, yeah, ACH, that it is, it's ACH foam um, in Salt Lake, and he's awesome. They're awesome, awesome people. So, but they're, they're everywhere. Um, it's a 3M plant. Uh, division called ACH. It used to be individual, now they got bought up by 3M, but it is a 3M plant called ACH foam. So hopefully that helps you. Industrial areas, they're, they're for commercial yep. and industrial stuff. So they also use the foam for building bridges, you know, where they don't want to compact the soil as much over time. They'll stack up a bunch of foam, then pack dirt up against it so they don't have to compact it. They use it in freeway projects. They use it in roofing, uh, yeah, just about everything. So, insulating your trailer. My trailers are all insulated to three quarter pound foam because it's a little lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful for that. <laughs> yes. So, um, again, just to review, again, make sure to mark the end of your end caps where that straight leading line goes. So here's the marks on this end cap. So when I want to cut this off once it's sheeted, I just throw a straight bar from this mark to the end bark. Then I can draw my straight line. I can cut perfectly down the center. I'll show you. You know, my bars are out in the other shop. Again, we'll try and show some of this over the weekend. But you can see you know, you're going to lay a straight edge on there from mark to mark, and you're going to go perfectly down the center of that three quarter inch block. And then when you bevel it, it just comes out absolutely beautiful, beautifully strong. Yeah, so again, every single step, you're going to take blue tape and you're going to run on it so that you can use a super sharp chisel to clean it down to the blue tape. Making sure that, especially on these blocks right here, make sure that this one right here, the 
trailing edge of your aileron is angled up and your leading edge of the aileron is angled up because those are actually on a crown. So I really try to make sure that these are angled up just a little bit. Then when I glue it together, you want to get it pretty close, you know, so that you can see where to glue it together at and then you can sand it down. You're going to notice that I have not even removed these pen marks. This was an oops. I was starting to look at how big I wanted my aileron. And what I was doing was going to be way too big. Um, I actually went a little smaller on these ailerons than a PAU edge. Um, even though this is a PAU wing that I'm building. So, um, another crazy one. I want to show all my flaws. I really do. So, when we're gluing this together, we're in such a rush. We run a small bead of thick CA on the top and one on the, the bottom and nothing in the middle. And when you grab this and tack it together, man, you're working with these super thin edges that you can break real easy. So you're pushing it together in a hurry. You're trying to put some kicker on there. You're trying to make sure that this is flush on top and bottom. Well, darn it. I accidentally left that one a little high. Well, don't worry. I mean, by the time that thing moves back down in, and it still sits perfectly in the shuck, it's not going to hurt you at all. Um, it just won't. So, now, if you had it way down there, remember, you just moved that whole layer on down, you're going to have a little bit of a problem. You can take a razor knife, cut down in there, crack the CA loose. So, but, hopefully that helps you guys tonight. We will get back. I'm going to do some steps of figuring out where these servo boxes need to go. Um, again, I don't, I don't use an exact map where I'm going to set these servo boxes. I sure don't set them in random. But I'm going to set them in there. I'm going to draw an arm. And I have some little paper tools for my arm sizes. I'm going to set this out there, figure out where this servo needs to be. And then what I do is I work on the tip and the root, and then I equalize the center one. Now, about guaranteed 99%, I won't be using this third box, but I'm going to install it anyways because it's just going to be better. So, what's your question? I don't have a question. Okay. I'm good. What did you want to install? Nothing. Come on. Come on. Speak up. There's I was something. trying to look at the clock. Oh, it's 9 14. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, guys, thank you very much for indulging tonight. Um, hopefully this helps you. Uh, that is my goal. That is really my goal in life is show you guys what I do, and hopefully you guys can try it yourself, and hopefully you guys can become the master. I mean, honestly, I try, 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 don't give up. Your first wing tube, mess it up. Who cares? Start over, do it again. Uh, every time I do them, I get better at it. I mean, yep, yep. So. Okay, Mr. Miyagi. Well, it's hey, it's like three kids. You know, you got to try one. Oh, it's geez. not enough. You got to try again. <laughs> By the time you get to the third one, she's perfect. Right? <laughs> perfect you say so. child. So. <laughs> You're gonna make me start coughing. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. I've had a cold. Oh. Hey guys, thank you very much, and I also want to say thank you again to my wife behind the camera. She's been sick, and she came out and helped us again tonight. I really want to say thank you to her, and thanks again to all you guys. Um, super appreciate it. So, thanks again. Have a great night. Good night.